Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Lollavita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. Suprema Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Welcome to the Irish in the UK. This week we're meeting Daniel O'Donnell who is here promoting his brand new album called Halfway to Paradise. Later in the show we'll be catching up with Pius Ford and John Allen who shared a retirement party. Pius has been transporting Irish produce across the Irish Sea for over 25 years and John Allen has given a lifetime of service to the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester. We'll also be talking to and having some music from Olivia Douglas. So sit back, relax and enjoy the show. I'm off to meet Daniel O'Donnell. Well, that'll be the day when you say goodbye, your yes, that'll be the day when you make me cry, you say you're gonna leave me, you know it's a lie, cause that'll be the day when I die. Daniel, welcome to the show and it's great to see you. Great to see you too, Martin. Nice to be here. Well, absolutely. Now, Daniel, of course, you've had a recording career spanning over 35 years. Many congratulations to you. Thank you very much. The first record I made was my Donegal Shore and Stand Beside Me. It was on a wee 45. And I recorded that in Big Tom Studios on the 9th of February, 1983. And of course, my Donegal Shore, you could say it's a Donegal anthem because it's so well known, so many people <coughs> record it, yeah. and it's still a very popular song today. Yeah, well, Johnny McCauley wrote it. Big Tom was the first to record it. Yeah. I don't know, there was a few different people recorded it before me, but I suppose the fact that I was from Donegal, that kind of, I gelled with it, and that, you know, became my song yeah. at the time. And when I'm singing it, you know, uh, anywhere, and you look, everybody knows the words of it. There's certain songs that, that you know, have done that, that people just know, and my Donegal Shore is one of them. But if that girl I can hold, every raindrop would be gold, it could fall. But if that girl I could hold, every raindrop would be gold. Forty albums on. How can you remember all the songs? Well, I don't know that I'd remember them all now. <laughs> uh, Chris, uh, somebody used to say Christy Moore, the reason he closed his eyes was he had the words written on the <laughs> eyelids. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. But I have, I have nothing, uh, uh, nothing to help me. Um, I rec Do you know the funny thing about the songs? I remember the songs I recorded 30 years ago better 
yeah. than the ones I would be recording now. Yeah. If I learned one to sing now and I stopped singing it for a wee while, yeah. I wouldn't. That's an age thing, I think. Yeah, but look at you're never lost for words because all your big following of fans out there, whenever you're singing, they'll all help you over oh, the sure words. Oh, sure they will. And funny yeah. enough, myself and Mary Duff sometimes, yeah. uh, if we're out singing, and we do yeah. forget, we put in <laughs> words. I do say to Mary, we wrote a nice piece for that song tonight, Mary, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> now, I know something that means so much to you was performing for Pope Francis at Phoenix Park and Crow Park. Certainly, it was, it was a big a big highlight you know of my my life not just yeah. my career i was at uh, i was in galway when pope john paul ii came at the youth mass mm. and uh, if somebody had told me that day that one day i would sing in the presence of a pope yeah. i would never have believed it yeah. it was a lovely weekend because of course we got to be part of that concert and then the next day before the mass in the phoenix park I got to sing four hymns, which was, in a way, although the Pope wasn't there at that time, in a way it was a nicer feeling because yeah. it was, it was the re I love the religious stuff anyway, yeah. but uh, to sing the hymns was even nicer, uh, you know, before the Mass. But it was a great, great feeling, you know, to stand there and look down and see the Pope sitting in front of you, it's wow. amazing. It's just something else. It's well, it's a once in a lifetime. It is. Once in a lifetime. It is. Especially in your own country. Yeah. You know, I had been in, um, I had been in, in Rome a few years ago. Yeah. And we went to Mass, you know, in St. Peter's with the to hundreds of thousands of others. And it's lovely to be in the presence of the Pope saying Mass. But there's something different about yeah. him being in your own country. Yeah. You know, there was a different uh, yeah. feel to it. and. Yeah. Uh, just lovely. Now, of course, you've had great success with your uh, TV shows back home on RTE. How have you found that? You know, you got into recording, making yeah. the shows, and yourself and your good, good wife, of course, Magella. You've had a huge audience watching you. Yeah, you know, we did the the road trips have been tremendously successful. You know, that they took us by surprise. I think they took everybody by surprise. Yeah. Um, and you know, all it is is us going about. Being yeah. ourselves, yeah. you know, it's not, you know, we're not directed or told to do this or told to do that. It's just we enjoy the travelling about and um, uh, been very successful. And then the Opry shows yeah. on TG Cahar yeah. um, have been very, very uh, popular too. And it's great to give the opportunity to the Irish music yeah. as well as, you know, some of the American singers that come over to be part of it. It's, um, it's lovely to be involved in, in these things. Listen to the rhythm of the falling rain Telling me just what a fool I've been I wish that it would go and let me cry in vain And let me be alone again and Of course you've had a really busy year this year touring around as well and promoting your new album now which we're going to chat about of course Halfway to Paradise That's and right. My goodness, so many fantastic songs on there. Yeah, you know, I always think if there was another time for me to be born musically, yeah. it would have been the 50s and 60s to be yeah. singing at that time. I love the music yeah. and um, the songs I've recorded, as you can see, so many of them. And the, the, the I feel comfortable yeah. singing them. And, uh, but now I have to say that my time was the time I'm, I'm in. Yeah. But um, if there was another time, it would be that era. And um, and the shows, when I do a bit of the 50s and 60s, it's always popular. Yeah. So the albums, it's, it's great to have the albums out, yeah. Oh, it's lovely listening music, yeah. really, really and yeah. congratulations on it, because you've got so many great songs on there, so many hit songs as well, and so many songs that we all know, but yeah. you do it in your own unique I, style. Well, I suppose, yes, I do it my own way, but we, we try to do them pretty much like the original, because, you know, you can't better what was a hit, yeah. you know, and, yeah. and just to sing it as it was in, in your own way, yeah. Uh, you know, it's 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 important to be true to the 
through to the, the, the original. Yeah, and of course your new album, Halfway to Paradise, it's only been released a couple of days and it's already in the charts. That's We're, right, they yeah. tell me it's in the top ten. So it is, at it's number great. five well, actually. that's all down to the audience again. Yeah. You know, every time we release an album for, I mean, I've been releasing albums since the, the, the mid-80s, as we said, but um, since 88, every album has gone into the, the UK charts. Yeah. And that's, as I said, down to the, the loyalty of the audience, and I'm very grateful to them. Of course, Daniel, you're here in London now promoting your new album, Halfway to Paradise, for, for the next few days, I yes, presume. Yes, I'm here now for a few days, you know, doing this interview with you and uh, a couple more things today. And then tomorrow I do a full day of radio interviews. I go into one studio here and you're able to connect with different uh, radio stations around the country it saves yeah. all the traveling and then Wednesday morning I'm on on the morning on ITV on the Lorraine show yeah so it's always great you know yeah. to get on the different shows and yeah. um, I suppose when I started out you never think you're going to be on yeah. television in other countries and you know all the things it's, it's just different to yeah. what I expected it to be now, Daniel, you mentioned earlier on about Big Tom, and of course we had the sad passing of Big Tom, and I know you attended his funeral, like many other people did as well, and of course we all miss him so much. Well, we'll never forget him. He, uh, you know, was such a big part of the music business in Ireland and left such a great legacy of music behind him. And um, I, I had the privilege of doing the Opry show. He was on the Opry show himself and Rose was there uh, that night in Derry and it was a tremendous show and probably one of the last TVs that he did, if not the last. Yeah. Um, and he was in great form. It's hard to believe that in such a short space of time both of them would be gone. Yeah. And uh, his funeral was beautiful. Yeah. And so many of us gathered and so many of his fans gathered. Yeah. A great tribute to him. Yeah. But as I said, he'll never be forgotten. Now, Daniel, tell us how people can uh, get hold of your uh, Halfway to Paradise new album. Well, I suppose in whatever shop, stock it, and you can download it and you can go on this thing on the internet. You, you can stream me and you can download me and Spotify me and there's all sorts of things yeah. that I don't even know how to do myself. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure if you have somebody that knows about the internet, it's easy got. Daniel, thank you for joining us Pleasure. today. Thanks, Lovely to Martin. see you. Thank Good you luck with the album. God bless. Thanks God a million. I want to be your lover But your friend is all I stay It's great to meet Daniel again and of course we wish him the very best of luck with his brand new album Halfway to Paradise. Now we're off for a little break, see you in a minute. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Supreme Upholstery Limited is a manufacturer of quality bespoke upholstered furniture. Come along with your ideas for that perfect sofa to fit your home and let Supreme bring your ideas to fruition. We also offer a service to the contract market, including large hotel groups and small family-run business. No matter how large or how small your order, you will always get that personal service from our sales team. Come along and visit our showroom. Lola Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. 
Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club, 83 Orford Lane, Warrington. A friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night. Tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports shown on the big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and crafts. Pop in for a friendly welcome and to book your event at the Warrington Irish Club, give Frank a call. IJK's Scrap Metal, Manchester. We provide payment for scrap metal, removal and disposal of cars and abandoned vehicles. A Weybridge facility, authorised treatment facility, recycling and waste management. Full compliance with all legal requirements. IJK Scrap Metal, Manchester. A friendly, professional and reliable service. The Dolphin Hotel and Mulhern Bar, situated in the heart of Cross Malina, is now under new ownership. Mayo's leading destination for food, beverages and accommodation. Food served from 9am till 9pm. Sample fresh local produce on our breakfast, lunch and a la carte menu. Or why not relax in Mulhern's Bar? We cater for weddings, parties and various functions. Stay with us in one of our beautiful ensuite rooms. You will be greeted with a smile from Mary and Pat Mulhern at the Dolphin and Mulhern's Bar, Cross Malina, County Mayo. Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. Welcome back. Now, Pius Ford has been transporting Irish produce across the Irish Sea for over 25 years, supplying a lot of the Irish centres and shops in the north of England. And John Allen, well, he's given a lifetime of service to the Irish World Heritage Centre in Manchester. Now, we're off to meet them both. end of 25 years Martin over and back across the Irish Sea but you know I can say I really enjoyed every moment of it if I didn't I wouldn't have done it so I know it's hard but it's going to be hard to <laughs> settle into a different life but we'll get there sometime. Now, where did you get the idea from originally to start taking Irish produce across the Irish Sea to the UK? I was living here and I'd be going home uh, a good bit to see my mother, God rest her, she was alive at the time. And the lads in the Irish Centre would be saying, Pies, bring us back a few black and white puddings and a bit of chef sauce. And they were the three main things. So I remember arriving at Dublin Airport, me only home for two days, as I said, to see my mother. And two big cases and I put it on the thing and the girl said what have you in that and she charged me £30 in old money when I got back and went to open it two or three bottles of the sauce had broken all over my clothes so I always say there was no profit in the first lot <laughs> Pie, so many people have turned out here today for your farewell party if you'd like and I was actually chatting to one of them there that said I come specially to see Pies today because he brought a wheelchair for my mum many years ago from England to Ireland yeah I carried everything, bikes, slot machines, lawnmowers, pool tables, beds. I have carried everything, Matt, in, in my van. The only thing that I didn't carry was a coffin, but I did bring the ashes. I always had a policy. If it went on the van, it went wherever they wanted it to go. Of course, you provided a great service here for the Irish community across the Irish Sea, and it's something that's not going to be replaced, and I think we're all going to miss it. Yeah, I'm afraid to say it um, won't be replaced. I was, I suppose, what you'd call the handyman, but I'm afraid now that will be cooling down a bit. And of course you brought a lot of the Irish produce, you stocked up the Irish shops and the Irish World Heritage Centre here in Cheatham Hill and Booth and Howard's, many more places. Yeah, yeah, all 
good, as I say, we started off with a few and I suppose now we'll be carrying 250 different lines of Irish produce and they all go and one likes this and another likes that and, you know, everyone has to be kept happy when you're in the game. You must have clocked up a few miles in your time. Only thinking about it the last day, I've never drove anything but a Ford Transit. But then again, Ford is good. And I was thinking, yeah, I have to have hit the million miles. Accident free, near enough, bear a small little tip that wasn't my own fault two years ago. Other than that, thank God, accident free. Now, what are you going to do with your spare time? Definitely going to start a bit of walking to get off this bit of a chub I have here. But then again, I always said that was there for if I was showing products to a new shopkeeper and I looked in, he'd say I was needing them myself. Yeah. So that'll be no longer be. So now I'll have to start getting a bit of weight off myself. Pius, thank you so much for all the wonderful service you've provided to the community here in Manchester and indeed Lancashire and around the north of England all over the last 25 years. And we hope you have a really happy retirement. Around the south, me wares I'd sell in public houses and hotels. There was never a guard or a customs man put his nose inside a transit van. John, how long have you been involved with the Irish World Heritage Centre? I've been involved in 25 years, but I helped out before I came on the committee, you know, but I've actually been on the committee 25 years. And of course yourself and the late John Walsh, you both worked together at the old Irish Centre for many years. We did, we all worked together. John and myself were mates and were partners in crime, if you like, you know, on, on the committee. John Keane was the president, of, he was the first president of the Irish Centre, and John was the vice president. They went John Lotton Messing died and John Walsh became president and I became vice president. So we always worked together anyway. You know, a lot of the lads that time, Martin Thornton, and Andy Byers, they, they all went back home to Ireland. They were all members of the committee. Matt Maher was a committee member, he's dead. A lot of people are gone now, as we know, you know, I passed away. They're doing a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work than I ever did for it. But they're all great people, they all helped out. But we all were just committee members. We were all friends as well and some of us were townies. And of course you are still heavily involved, you have been still heavily involved in the new Irish World Heritage Centre and you've done so much work behind the scenes. You're never a man to be out in front and take the, the clapping and the glory, but you've done so much work in fundraising and various other things down the year. Yeah, I did, Matt, but that's, you, don't, you don't want a committee, you know, for the limelight. This is what you do when the people only See, when you come in, when the place is open, there's bands, there's music on and all that. It's what's, what, what's, what's done when the crowds under around the people. It's what's done in the background, Mike Martin. And, and this is what makes it happen on the day when the crowd is in. It's because the people like us, they make sure that everything is done right and everything is prepared for them. So when they do turn up, it's all there. And of course you got involved in lots of other Irish activities as well. I did. I, I was involved. For, I was in the uh, Tipperary Association committee for many years, and the Sligo Association. Michelle, my wife, Dr. Mercer, she was on the Sligo Association as well. And so there was hardly a nice the week where you had some kind of a meeting, you know, and, and that was it. But, but we didn't mind that, you know what I mean? It's a way of socialising with people as well, and you get to know people over here, and that's how you get to know people by getting involved in, in, in groups like that. Well, of course, you mentioned there yourself and your late wife, Michelle. You've done so much for the Irish community here in Manchester. And I think that was borne out today by so many people here coming to see you as well and shaking hands to you and wishing you the very best of luck in your retirement. Yeah, Martin, yeah, but, but, but as I said before, Martin, you don't do it for that. But it's always nice, Martin, to be appreciated, you know what I mean? Especially now I've stepped down, you know. And thanks to people like you, Michael Ford and Banking, all people like Martin, a lot of these people are still carrying on, which is great, like, you know. And I'll be keeping an eye on you, <laughs> make sure you, yeah. But, yeah, I'm sure you'll be doing a great job. And, and I know you're doing a great job as it is anyway, so, yeah, there'll be no worries there, Martin, you'll be fine. Well, thank you, John, and thank you for all the great work you've done here at the Irish World Heritage Centre and all the other activities you got involved with. You've been a marvellous servant of the Irish community here in Manchester, and long you may enjoy your retirement. <laughs> We 
we wish Pius and John the very best of luck in their retirement and a big thank you to them both for the great service they've given to the Irish community here in the UK. Now we're off to meet Olivia Douglas. <music> Olivia, great to see you. Of course, you're here uh, as a support act with Nathan Carter. Yeah, that's right. It's great to be here tonight, Martin Coventry, and I'm really looking forward to it. I've done all the, the nights on Nathan's UK tour. You just get a great buzz, do you know, and once the crowd is good, then it just makes it a little bit easier. Not saying that it is easy going out there now before Nathan Carter, but anyway, no, I'm really enjoying it, and you get a great buzz. Now, of course, you're really busy, you know, touring on with Nathan. It's a great opportunity as well for you, isn't it? It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's great to get it. It's such a wide audience, and, um, you know, I'm still doing my own stuff at home when, when I am at home <laughs> for the odd time now but um, yeah no it's, it's great it's absolutely brilliant. Now you've made a big massive impression with everybody with your music over the last couple of years everybody enjoys your songs and your recording playing. Oh well that's good I mean I look at I do stuff that I loved you know that Leaving Tipperary went very well and then of course Listing Varna was written by Shuni Crampsey and my latest one A Hug or Two is doing really well as well so yeah. thank god yeah. And any plans to go back into the recording studio? Yeah, I'm trying to get back in. I do have a new single, um, hopefully before Christmas, I'll try and have it out. And I'm going back in then early January to start my new album. So uh, you're, are you with Nathan now for the next month or so on the UK tour? Yeah, up until, yeah, and his Christmas shows then as well in December, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, so. How's all the folks back in County Offaly? All good now. I better say hello to them as well. Hello to everybody that knows me there. And um, yeah, they're all doing good. All doing good. Great to catch up with you, Olivia, and we wish you the very best luck in the future. Hope to see you soon. Thanks a million, Martin. Thank you. I'll find myself a fine young man somewhere amongst the crowd. There'll be music, cheer and dancing, and we all be singing loud. And we'll dance the stack of barley on the green by Miss McLeod. When I get to his still brown in the morning. Well done to Olivia Douglas, she's a fantastic entertainer. Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Don't forget, Henry McGlade is back with his show next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock and we are here with the Irish in the UK at 7.30. Until then, take care and thank you for watching.